Hello, my name is Timur Schütte and I am one of the MAG members working on the 2020 IGF environment track. Transcending sectors and regions, climate action is an issue that all stakeholders have committed to, but one that calls for truly integrated and innovative solutions. The internet and digital technologies have a powerful impact to help advance the goals of the UN 2030 agenda. They connect people, initiatives and resources across the globe, opening up relationships, information and avenues for collaboration. They can help monitor and track the environment and effects of climate change, facilitating understanding, prevention and more targeted interventions globally. At the same time, Digital technologies can also be deployed in ways that counter the global goals. While the ICT sector currently performs better than the wider market, the sector's expected growth poses its own challenges on energy use and carbon emissions, as well as negative externalities such as increasing resource consumption, pollution associated with manufacturing and e-waste. There is an urgent need to identify and address the cases in which the development and use of the internet and ICTs as well as related devices and services might have adverse environmental impacts. The IGF 2020 environment track will explore the relationship between the internet digital technologies and the environment to better understand how these technologies can contribute to a more sustainable future. The environment track aims to explore three main policy areas. First, how can the benefits of the internet and digital technologies continue to be harnessed while at the same time reducing their environmental and climate impacts. Second, how can the internet and digital technologies be further developed and leveraged, particularly by sectors that traditionally have not considered, considered themselves to be stakeholders in digital and internet policy, such as the agricultural sector, construction industries and retail supply chains, to aid in combating climate change and environmental degradation and promote sustainable, inclusive economies. And third, sessions in the environment track will also consider how the internet's infrastructure can be made more resistant to damages caused by climate change related weather events and how the internet and digital technologies can be leveraged to monitor and provide alerts when infrastructure systems and ecosystems face imminent threats. If we are to avoid climate crisis, there is only one way forward, deliberate and ambitious climate action on a global scale to keep the global temperature increase below 1.5 degrees Celsius as set out in the landmark Paris Agreement and achieving net zero emissions by 2050. ICTs and digital technologies have a transformational impact on our ability to meet this goal and the IGF is the place for all of us to meet and forge lasting partnerships to effectively harness this potential. The track is composed of 13 workshops and open forums proposed by the IGF community as well as the main session and the high level session dealing with the topic of environment. Take a look at the IGF schedule to discover these sessions and mark them for your calendar. We are looking forward to seeing you there. Trust has been a topic widely discussed at the IGF over the years. For 2020, the track received 98 virtual proposals and 33 of them were included in the program alongside another 35 sessions under the trust track on a variety of session formats, such as open forums. As in previous years, cybersecurity and digital safety continue to be of concern and the security, stability and resilience of the internet is a recurring topic. Two issues are of growing interest this year, reflecting geopolitical developments. One is the concept of digital sovereignty in a trend towards internet fragmentation. The other is the growth of misinformation online and the impact that can have on trust in the media and in electoral processes worldwide. We have clustered the policy questions based on three main areas clearly identified in the proposals included in the trust thematic track. The first cluster refers to a fundamental requirement for an effective online experience, that the infrastructure, systems, services, and applications that make up the internet be secure, stable, and resilient. So what are the building blocks that will ensure robust internet operations, use, and growth to fulfill such requirements as the threat landscape is constantly evolving? Secondly, to enable everyone to trust their access to the internet will be beneficial, safety is paramount. Respect for human rights and the protection of the marginalized and vulnerable are crucial ingredients. 
So what exactly can stakeholders do to create an internet that is a safe and secure space for all and minimizes the risks and potential harm to users? The third and final cluster covers how finding solutions for these issues often requires a trade-off between the wish for absolute security and the desire to protect a wide range of freedoms and rights that have a representation in the real world. So how can we foster a dialogue between stakeholders where fear and misunderstanding are replaced by mutual trust and recognition of our various roles in tackling these serious safety and security challenges? Trust is indispensable if we want to be able to enjoy a safe, healthy, and empowering digital environment. Good day. My name is Paul Ramey. I'm a member of the IGF Mac one of the co-facilitators for the inclusion track. The primary aim of this track is to engage the internet governance community on the issues, challenges, and solutions for the achievement of an equitable and inclusive internet. For the 2020 virtual IGF, MAG received 70 workshop submissions, of which 18 were selected and form part of this track. The track that aims to engage you in the discussions and dialogues on topics such as local content and language diversity, availability, affordability, and access of infrastructure, design and policy for social inclusion, digital literacy and capacity building, the digital economy and emerging technologies, as well as governance and policy. What do we mean by inclusion? Inclusion is about ensuring those with limited or no access to the internet, such as the unserved and underserved communities, as well as those for which the internet is not accessible, for reasons such as gender, disability, literacy, affordability, and infrastructure are now included and have equal opportunity to be meaningfully connected to the internet. Inclusion is also about the activities related to the achievement of an inclusive information society, about engaging all stakeholders, ensuring everyone's voice is heard and treated equally in the decision-making process, and ensuring that everyone has the right access, skills, and motivation to reap the social benefits of going online. Inclusion is a key contributor towards a stronger economy and enhanced economic development through shared wealth, shared employment, and equal opportunity for all. It is an enabler towards the fulfillment of the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The track seeks to address some of the pressing issues, such as what the stakeholders need in order to develop and implement sustainable initiatives and policies that will foster meaningful digital inclusion and eliminate all forms of the digital divide. What the policies, regulations and support structures that are needed to build the enabling environments for inclusive digital economies that allow everyone to have access to their benefits in both developed and developing countries. How to ensure that policy spaces and processes that address digital inclusion issues are inclusive and foster the activities and meaningful participation of those people and communities whose digital inclusion issues hope to overcome. I hope that you find time to join us on this digital journey and trust that our selection of workshops prove to be informative and relevant to your future internet governance initiatives. Thank you. The data track will provide for discussion on the fundamental challenge of ensuring the benefit of the data revolution to contribute to inclusive economic development while protecting the rights of people. The generation, collection, storage, transfer, and processing of data, including personally identifiable data, have enabled new social, cultural, and economic opportunities than ever previously imagined. At the same time, the massive collection, transfer, and processing of data through the application of data-driven technologies by public as well as private entities pose challenges around privacy, freedom of expression, and the exercise of other human rights. The data track will contribute to identifying best approaches to ensure the development of human-centric data governance framework at national, regional, and international levels. Data is a vital resource for the world today. It underpins digital economies. It can help identify emerging environmental and health trends, as well as identify potential solutions. And it's vital for measuring progress toward goals such as the SDGs. Yet much of the world is still not connected to the internet and has yet 
to fully leverage the benefit of the digital revolution, further entrenching existing discrimination and disparities. What policies and concrete action are needed to ensure that data collection and use can benefit all, particularly those in developing countries, marginalized communities, and the unconnected? The borderless nature of the internet means local data can travel across the globe in seconds, and yet international and national legal and regulatory frameworks have lagged behind in ensuring that human rights and protection available to citizens in the real world are also available in this new world of internationalized data flows. In a world where technology will always develop faster than laws and regulation, what needs to be done to ensure people's rights are protected regardless to use of data. Finally, the COVID-19 pandemic prompted many public authorities and private actors around the world to turn to data collection to fight the virus, often via expedited policymaking decisions and processes without public consultation and citizen engagement. Post-pandemic, however, it remains to be seen how the increased collection and use of data by public authorities and private sector during the pandemic may be used to inspire further innovation in data practices for the good of all, or how it might be used to deepen surveillance of citizens and human rights exercise threats. The question here is what are the governance challenges and lessons learned during the pandemic about implementation of data-driven technologies in a diversity of contexts across the world? Has COVID-19 made people think about data in a different way? Data-driven technologies powered by the use of internet need to consider how to create the condition to ensure human agency to facilitate inclusive innovation, to ensure competition, to foster trust and human rights respect in the development of services, including through the use of increasing data for the fulfillment of the SDGs.